Okay, let us understand today about the classification of materials. What is the need to classify materials? Okay, and what are the methods? Even before I get into materials, I want to discuss what do you mean by classification. Now, in your household life, okay, or maybe in your school life for that matter, let's say you are a student. Okay, so you have got your own books, right? Then you might be having your shoes, okay? And let's say you also have your games. So let's say you have three quantity of each one of them. So you have three pair of shoes, three books, and three games, right? Now, as you live in your house, you put your books either in your school bag, okay, or you put them in the book shelf. Similarly, the shoes you keep in the shoe rack or outside your house. Again, for the games, there might be CDs and CD racks which might be there where you might be putting all your games or they could be in Almira right now you must be wondering why am I giving you so many examples have you ever thought that you will put one book in the shelf one shoes in the same shelf and one game let's say your cricket bat in the same bookshelf or have you ever thought that you will put the cricket bat outside the house no someone might just come and take it away right so what we do in our life is that we classify various things that we have let's call them various possessions in different categories we classify them as books we classify them as shoes we classify them as games and then put them into one particular kind of a treatment. Why? Because they have a different characteristic, different need, different thing that is required. Similarly, there is a classification of material. The need for classification of material arises from the fact that different material possess different characteristics. And according to the characteristics, their use are different. So let's say if you have an iron rod, okay, and you have a cricket bat. Cricket bat is made up of wood, whereas the iron rod is made up of iron. Both iron and wood have different characteristics and different end uses. I mean, the use to which an iron rod can be put cannot be applicable across for wood as well. Now, you can cut an iron rod, right, or not? No, you can't cut an iron rod, whereas you can cut a wood, right? So, therefore, it's important to classify these things into different sections because each one of them have their own set of characteristics, right? And these characteristics define as to what kind of use can you put these various materials to. Hence, there is an important requirement of classifying materials into various categories. Now, when you try to classify a material, there are various factors on the basis of which you can classify them. For the purpose of this video, I am just naming these factors. What we will also do is, we will take a look at each one of them in different videos. So the first one is the utility. What is the use of a particular material? Okay. So let's say an iron rod has a different utility and a cricket bat has a different utility. 
then you can have a baseball bat. Right? So they have a different utility vis-a-vis -vis this. Right? What are the other characteristics on the basis of which you can classify the material? Transparency. You can see through certain objects like glass, while you can't see through iron. Luster. What do you mean by luster? Luster basically refers to the shining. Okay? Softness. Hardness. An iron rod is very hard. Right? Whereas something like a cotton is very soft. Right? So these are the basic characteristics on the basis of which you can classify the materials. We'll see each one of them in different videos separately.